The president's failure to give time frames on the country's energy plan has been met with much criticism. In a recent opinion piece, former DA leader Tony Leon questions if the interventions will even ever materialize. The energy crisis coincides with the rising cost of living, which has prompted calls for a national shutdown in some quarters of our society. So to weigh in on South Africa's contemporary challenges, let's bring in former leaders of opposition parties. The former leader of the DA is Tony Leon. Uh, former leader of Azapo is Dr. Musibudi Mangena. Both of them joining us via our very link this morning. To both our guests, thanks very much indeed for your time. It's lovely to have you on the program. Uh, Tony Leon, you wrote this opinion piece, so perhaps let me start with you. I mean, part of what you do is ventilate this um, term that was coined back in 1966 by a former U.S. congressional leader around a credibility gap. Perhaps define what that means for us and help us place where it applies in South Africa's context. So a credibility gap uh, was uh, actually Gerald Ford, who was the congressional leader of the Republicans, then became president, said it about Lyndon Johnson's claims that America wasn't escalating its presence in Vietnam in 1966 when clearly it was. And it's a form of deception between what is said and what the actual reality is. And, you know, that became known as the credibility gap, which clearly applied to American policy and practice in Vietnam. Alas, I think it very much applies to the Ramaphosa presidency. Between the grand announcements and the reality comes something else. And obviously, you know, we all suffer from load shedding. I was 13 hours in my household last week without electricity. That's not a an unusual thing, sadly, today for South Africans in the year 2022. We're not in 1822, but 2022, but here we are. And I think the problem isn't the absence of plans. It's the absence of implementation, hard deadlines, and accountability for the failure to meet plans. And, and you know, the one thing that struck me about Ramaphosa's 10-point energy plan is we've heard it before. Right. And we're, so, for example, in 2019... Before the State of Nation address, uh, the president appointed some high-level energy experts, including Brian Darmus, you know, from ESCOM, Sir Mick Davis, who was previously CEO of ESCOM, and Anton Eberhardt and, and others, to be in an ESCOM task team. And, and they made a whole series of recommendations uh, and gave them to the president between January and June 2019. And most of those were not implemented. And a lot of what appeared in the package on Monday night comes directly from that. Uh, and that's a good thing in the sense that uh, there's a credible uh, expertise behind them. But you've got to say, why didn't you do this three years ago right. or ten years ago? And what's different now other than the fact that we're on the edge of a cliff and about to fall off? It felt like we we're on the edge of a cliff even back in 2019. And I guess what's sobering is that had we actually begun those interventions, Tony Leon, at that time, today would be a very different reality. In other words, we wouldn't have seen ourselves possibly having to escalate load shedding all the way to stage six. Exactly. So, and, and you've got to say to yourself, well, you know, it's one thing to make the announcements. And, and indeed, I, I think the, you know, one of the most, uh, I think, favorable aspects that uh, the president announced was the removal of red tape, expansion of bid, bid windows for renewable energy projects. But that's actually in the works. And uh, it was interesting in business day this morning, they mentioned that uh, mining companies have uh, av available projects that would bring something like a 5,100 megawatts of additional power onto the grid. But because of bureaucracy, only 295 megawatts uh, worth of projects have actually happened since uh, the bid window was uh, opened. So, you know, what is Sir Ramposa going to do to hold his ministers and his director general's feet to the fire to ensure this time, against all expectation, it will be different? As we hope it must be. I'm not here to, you know, wish uh, a perpetual darkness on the country. Far from it. But I've got to say... You know, the difference between a plan and the execution of the plan is the difference between literally light and darkness. Yeah. Dr. Mangana, let me bring you into the discussion. I mean, you've possibly been in politics longer than I've been able to read. And for as long as I can remember, the criticism not only against the ANC, but also against South Africa in general, was around the fact that the policies are there. In fact, they're pretty good. They compete with the best policies in the world. But somehow we could just never finish things through. We can never see things through, I should say. I mean, even as we count down to the policy conference this weekend of the ANC, are you, are you of the feeling of the sentiment that that is likely to change anytime soon? No. Um, I don't think anything is about to change at all. 
and we, we are uh, very good on paper. Just look at the constitution, and if you read it, then you are in, in, in mass, say, or you learn from mass and you read our constitution, you will think that the people of South Africa are leading a wonderful life. Um, and and in, in, in fact, it is not so. And it, it doesn't only touch that, it touches so many other aspects of our lives. Just look at the municipalities. You know, there, there is, it's, it's an absolute mess there. Uh, probably uh, it, it's, it's not as, as um, overwhelming as uh, ESCOM, or as uh, dramatic as ESCOM. Uh, and it isn't because people have no knowledge, people don't know what needs to be done, there are no laws, there are no regulations and so on. They are simply not being implemented everywhere. And so it will be the case with this um, uh, ESCOM, unless uh, something has happened that we are not aware of, but otherwise uh, promise, 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 and nothing is done. Look at the, the, the uprisings uh, last July. Uh, we were told that um, uh, people will be arrested and they will be, they will, they will, they will, they will be uh, prosecuted and nothing happens. And look at the shootings just uh, the other day. Uh, nothing is happening. The SIU uh, is perpetually investigating. And those people that are being investigated know what the rules are, they know the law and so on, but still uh, they do wrong, uh, secure in the knowledge that nothing is going to happen to them. Mm. All right, gentlemen, so that's the, that's the diagnosis. Dr. Mangena, what's the prognosis? I mean, what does the way out of this look like? Or unless we're saying that even that's a bit murky. Well, if, if I might just come in here and say, uh, I, I do think there might be finally a realization dawning in the presidency and in the binnacring of the ANC power circles that if they don't fix this immediate problem, that is going to be the ejector seat in the next elections. Because, you know, we, we have our differences in this country and we, we have a different diagnosis or indeed prognosis. But basically, you know, without electricity, uh, no one has anything. And uh, I think unless there's a stable return to continuous electricity supply, the ANC will be absolutely imperiled at the polls. They might be anyway. So I think that that might have hastened some kind of conclusion. But once again, there, there are quite a lot of obstacles in the place to this because essentially, I mean, if you strip down through the essence of what Ramaphosa announced on Monday night, Basically, he's saying that we are going to have energy procurement and supply coming from outside ESCOM. So ESCOM is going to lose its monopoly under these proposals that they implemented. And then, of course, the ANC as a party is taking on another very powerful constituency, the public sector unions, particularly uh, Kasatu. And they've already warned uh, that this plan would uh, denude ESCOM of both its ability to uh, generate uh, as, uh, energy, but also particularly to, to, to pay for it. So I think there's going to be opposition within. And, and the one thing we haven't seen from the Ramaphosa presidency uh, over four years now is any ability to actually stand up to the countervailing power interests in his own party. So yeah. I think this will be a test of that particular commitment or lack of it. We're all waiting in anticipation. It almost feels like all of that is going to unfold later on in December. But Dr. Mangena, you wanted to weigh in there. No, 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 I wanted to say that the, 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 the fundamental solution comes from the citizens of this country. We should realize that um, the country doesn't belong to presidents or uh, governing parties or whatever the case might be. The country belongs to us. And the people who are governing us are uh, put in there by us. And if the population, the citizens of this country realize that um, it is time for them to hire new people, that is, voting new people who will change the circumstances, who will attend to all these uh, problems that we face, um, then we, we will not see any change at all. The, we are fixated with one party as if uh, it is um, uh, ordained to, to govern the country. It isn't like that. Huh. And so there is a, a, a mind, uh, my mindset change that is required on the part of uh, uh, the population, but of course it needs uh, political parties, uh, civil society and everybody to say no, we don't want this to happen in our country, we will have a different situation. We are fixated with one party, 
Tony Leon, is that not an indictment on the opposition? I'm sure it is. And, you know, I lead an opposition party of some size, Dr. Mangen and another, and we clearly failed in our task. doesn't mean you should give up on it. But, but I would say I think there's, you know, if people would draw the correct parallels with uh, ESCOM into the political space, part of the problem that ESCOM manifests is it has a monopoly on power, distribution and generation in this country. Uh, and that's led us really to a, a very dark place, literally and figuratively. And the same is true of power. I, I mean, you know, I, I was in Britain last week, as it happens, and there's a big contest there for the leadership of the Conservative Party. But actually, the Conservative Party are likely to lose the next general election in Britain because for the simple reason they've been in power, would have been in power for 14 years. You know, our, our current government has been in continuous power for 28 years. It's had a monopoly of power, next election, 30 years. And whatever you think of the opposition in its various forms, you know, if I was a voter, leaving aside the fact that I was the leader of the opposition years, some years ago, I would say, well, let's try the other crowd. I mean, you know, let's... Let's break the monopoly on power in this country and see what happens, because if we carry on where we are now, we know what the results are going to be. The final bite of the cherry, Dr. Mangena. We have tried, you know, essentially democratizing power in some municipalities, and that hasn't turned out really well. Um, so I guess at national level, the question becomes, does that really become the solution when we've got proxies, if you like, of what co-governance looks like in a country like ours? Well, perhaps uh, uh, co-governance uh, might be chaotic and, 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 uh, and not so smooth in, in, in terms of running and so on, but it is our salvation, at, at least for the time being uh, or in the near future, uh, because it is not easy when you have got a, a multi-party arrangement to engage in uh, this uh, shenanigans that we have seen in, in, in our country. Uh, but I, I, I think that we, we, we are learning. We shouldn't, we shouldn't despair. We shouldn't uh, uh, throw our hands in the air because, as I say, the country doesn't belong to a party. And so if a, one party is, is messing up, and I believe that it is incapable presently of uh, changing course, if one, one party doesn't, is, is not doing the right thing, let net, don't let the, all of us throw our hands up in the air as if the country doesn't belong to us but someone else. Mm. Dr. Musubudi uh, Mangena and Tony Leon, former leaders of Azapo and the DA respectively, thanks very much indeed for both your times.